Hi, welcome back, everybody. Let's continue talking about marine invertebrates. And so let me start by talking really quick about development. Once again, where we left off last time, what I want you to know is that the zygote is the first diploid cell, has two sets of chromosomes. That comes from the fusion of a sperm and egg, typically. So when the sperm fertilizes the egg, that very first cell is called a zygote. And then that cell, which is actually a very big cell, copies the information and it divides. And then you have two cells and four and six. And that continues on. You don't need to worry about the names of those parts. But eventually I end up with this big ball of cells. And it's like a balloon, if you will. And if I took my thumbs and I pushed my thumbs into my balloon, you would have what they call a gastrula. Uh, I think we've mentioned this before, but if not, just really quickly here, we're gonna talk about organisms that have what we call radial symmetry, and that is like a wheel or a circle in which you could divide the animal in many different ways where you still have a right and left, and they include Nidarians and Tenophores, and we're gonna talk about those. And they have a tissue system level of organization, with two tissues, they're diploblastic, two tissues, endoderm and ectoderm. And the Nidarians, at least the first group we'll talk about, have, they come in two very sort of distinct body forms. One's called a polyp, and the other is called a medusa. For example, if you had a football team and you had a player that was 320 pounds on the football team, and was really a big like giant person you might go that's a lineman and then if you had somebody that was short but incredibly fast maybe and weighed you know 200 pounds or 190 pounds that might be like a running back so it's a it's a body style not necessarily a species the other thing about Nigerians is they have these specialized stinging cells you might have heard about before they are called nendocytes Nindocytes are the stinging cell, and inside a nindocyte is a specialized stinging structure called a nematocyst. And when the nematocyst is fired, it stings its prey, fish or whatever. It could be a human. Often they have some kind of toxin that goes along with it, but it is what Nigerians typically use for feeding. And the other thing I'll mention just really quick here, you don't need to know this figure, uh, but um, when I talk about Nigerians having a polyp body style or a medusa body style, uh, some species of them will switch between the body types in different parts of their life cycle. Uh, some are always one body type and some will switch depending on where they're at in their life cycle. Okay, so the first group or the first uh, class, if you will, is called hydrozoa. So this phylum is called Nideria. And this class is called hydrozoa. So in the class hydrozoa, uh, they are almost all entirely marine. Most species contain both a polyp and a medusa stage, kind of like what I was talking about before. The polyp stage will often be an organism that is colonial. And what that means is it's a bunch of individual animals that kind of live together, kind of like in a little neighborhood. And they reproduce asexually, which means without sex, and they can reproduce by budding, which means they basically copy the cells inside their body and they grow another individual. That's called budding. And then they also reproduce sexually, which is how most animals reproduce. We'll talk about why that's important later on. But they reproduce sexually where they make the equivalent of sperm and eggs and form larvae and those often look very different than the adults. Uh, one that's worth noting that's mentioned in your book is this really interesting one here. It's called the Portuguese Man of War, and it is a hydrozoan that is actually a really big colonial type of hydrozoan. And the individuals in the colony forms this large thing called a float, and it's filled with air, it's like a gas bladder, and that forms the flow to the sail, and then there's a whole bunch of tentacles that hang off of it, and they can be, you know, really, really extremely long, and, um, and, and all of the um, hydrozoans that are on there, all the polyps that are hanging off the tentacles, are capable of stinging 
Okay, next group is the class Scyphozoa. The Scyphozoans are all marine and they either have a polyp stage that is reduced or it's absent altogether. And the Medusa stage is a free living version of this Scyphozoa. And the most common one you know of these are going to be the sea jellies. Uh, next class is Anthozoa, and the Anthozoa are all marine and they have a polyp stage that's dominant. In fact, they have no Medusa stage at all. So you don't find them in the form of the jelly. Uh, these are all like sea anemones. Sea anemones are, in fact, in the class Anthozoa, and coral reefs represent huge amounts of these anthozoans uh, all over uh, mainly tropical reef areas of the world, Australia, Hawaii, and anywhere where you have warm tropical water uh, and you have a good functioning reef ecosystem, you'll have lots of these anthozoans. The next is kind of an unusual one that we don't have very often. We see around us here, but it's worth mentioning because it's kind of, it's, it's very interesting. It's a different class. It's called a cubozoa. And the cubozoa are what we call box jellies. And they have these complex eyes that are embedded in the Medusa stage in the top of it. And there are quite a few different species. One of the most common or one of the most famous ones is called the sea wasp. And the venom from it can kill 60 people. I was in Australia many, many years ago. One of the things I found very interesting is one of the days in Australia, uh, we were there and there was a beach and there was a little sign that said, and I don't remember what particular species it was, but basically they were having a, a bloom of some kind of box jelly right off the shore there. And they had a little sign saying, hey, don't go in the water, you know, box jelly you know, I forgot what they called it, box jelly bloom. And when you go down to the beach and you see the sign, don't go in the water, uh, the beach is empty. There's nobody in the water, totally empty. Now, I find that interesting because I live down by the beach here in Southern California, and you can have signs up and you can have guards up. You have like, you have like lifeguards out and you have people patrolling the beach and you have signs in like, you know, nine different languages telling people don't go in the water because there's a bacteria sewage or whatever it is. And there are people still in the water surfing or trying to go down there. So, okay. The next is a different phylum altogether. And it's called phylum Tinafora. These are called cone jellies. And they have these little hair-like projections on the body uh, that are called uh, cilia. And cilia are like little tiny hairs that they're kind of like flagella, but they're much smaller. These animals have these cilia. They're the largest known animals to be able to move using only cilia. And they don't have nindocytes or nematocysts. They do have instead these tentacles that have what are called coloblasts on them. And these are adhesive cells, they're sticky. So they capture prey by using the tentacles to stick to what they're trying to capture but they are not venomous. They can't hurt you or anything like that. As we go through our development, um, what we're gonna do as we go through, I guess I should stop there. Let me stop there.